Hi everybody, it's Mr. El Camusi. Today we're going to be exploring some of the basic language features of the works of William Shakespeare. Although the works of William Shakespeare date back almost 450 years, they still remain very much a part of our literature, culture, and understanding. So much of the terminology, the concepts, the stories, the information that we use today in our modern English come from William Shakespeare's works. In order for us to really understand the English of today, we do need to go back and understand his works and the language of his time period. But although Shakespeare wrote in the English language, English looked very different back then during his time. So in order for us to understand his English, we do need to go back and revisit some of the fundamental basics of the late Middle English period of his time, and this video will help us to do that. So for starters, let's take this example. Thee and thou, back then, were terms used to say you. For example, if I wanted to say I like you, back then I could say I like thee. If I wanted to say between you and I, I could say between thee and I. At least that's how you could use the word thee. Thou is a little more complicated. It has a few other rules. For instance, if I wanted to say, you can come over, in Middle English, I would say, thou canst come over. The reason is that when you use thou, you have to add an st or an est as a suffix to the verb that is associated with that you. We'll understand this with a couple more examples. Such as this one. You will be happy would be pronounced, thou wilt be happy. Once again, I'm adding a suffix at the end of the verb that is attached to the you, or the thou in this case. In the biblical example, you will not kill is pronounced, thou shalt not kill, or you shall not kill. Where are you going? Where art thou going? Speaking of which, where is pronounced whither back then. So where art thou going becomes whither art thou going. Why are you going there? Would become why art thou going there? Or should I say why art thou going thither? Because hither, thither, and whither mean here, there, and where. Speaking of meanings, why means wherefore. And so, the complete sentence here, when corrected to fit Middle English, why are you going there, becomes, wherefore art thou going thither? In addition to thee and thou meaning you, thy means your, with a couple of exceptions which we will also look at. But let's focus on the basic first. Thy means your. So if I was to say, I like your shirt, I would say, I like thy shirt. Or, where is your house would become, whither is thy house. But just as English can become really complicated, thy can sometimes be used as thine, just as my can sometimes be used as mine. How does this work? If thy means your and my means what belongs to me, they become thine and mine, meaning the suffix at the end is changed, Whenever they're followed by a vowel, A, E, I, O, U, or Y, or by an H. And the reason is because the letter H at the beginning of a word used to be silent. So, horse used to be orse. House used to be ouse. And so, if you want to say, I adore your accent, rather than saying, I adore thy accent, you would have to say, I adore thine accent. That's because it's followed by a vowel. The same case would occur in this sentence. Where is your house would become, whither is thine house? Thine is used here rather than thy because the word following begins with an H and H's were silent, so it actually begins with the vowel. So it should sound like this. Whither is thine house? Here is my house becomes, hither is mine ouse. My follows the same rule as thy. 
So whenever it is followed by a vowel or an H, my becomes mine. Hither is mine house. Now all of these rules may sound pretty funny and silly, but they are the foundations of a language that was spoken at the time of William Shakespeare, which although is called English, is very different from the English we have today. If we're going to read the works of Shakespeare and understand what he's saying, we need to be familiar with these basic fundamentals of his language. Knowing these rules will help us understand and appreciate the works of William Shakespeare. Thank you for watching.